So, thank you for being here. Every good speech needs a prop. So here's my props. Every Thursday, Emma Goldman Abortion Clinic in Iowa City does abortions all day long. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the front lines and how you might find your role. Pray for your role to be one that's open to you and how you might tell someone else what their role might be. On October 5th, these are flyers we hand out there all to the women to tell them without judgment there is help for them and to remind them the last thing Emma Goldman will do for them and the abortionist who by the way is on staff at our University of Iowa hospitals and clinics she leaves there and goes over to Emma Goldman to perform abortions on Thursdays the last thing Emma Goldman will do for them is help them kill their baby whatever's bringing them there they won't help with if they have trouble after their abortion physically or mentally Emma won't help them, pro-life people will. If they can't pay their rent, and that's one reason they're there, Emma won't help them, but we will. If they need a doctor, Emma won't help them, but we will. If they're worried about their education, Emma Goldman and all the pro-abortion people won't help them, we will. October 5th, we were there and we tried to hand these out to people, and a man came up to another lady and I who were there, and in broken English, he said, I need to talk to this lady. And the lady was Cheryl Schwager, who leads the brave Johnson County Right to Life group. She'd been there the week before and handed this brochure. It says, you are strong, you are not alone, and it's filled with help and resources. Promises to these women without judgment to help them. So she gave it to him, blessed him, he drove off. A week later, October 5th, I was standing there with another uh, woman who was praying, and I had some of these in my hand, but he came up and he said, I need to talk to this woman. To make a long story short, we walked up with him where his wife and he had parked uh, about a block and a half away. They had their three-year-old daughter with them. They said they had come the week before to get medication, abortion pills, thought about it, prayed about it, changed their minds, and came back to find the person who said, we'll help you. Well, we all know each other. We have a group that comes down from Dubuque to join the brave people of Johnson County, the surrounding area. So we usually have five or six people there. So I knew Cheryl said, the short version is this. They were there because they were concerned about finances. They have two other grade school children and a three-year-old, and this would be uh, their fourth. So the lady I was talking to said, I, I said, have you ever done this before? And she said, no. I said, well, I have. And I said, Let's go up there and just make sure we don't forget everything. Forget anything. All we're going to do is ask them what help they need. All we're going to do is ask them that. In a half an hour, we had all their information, and we said to them, within an hour, you're going to get a phone call from somebody, and this could have been anybody, it happened to me. You're going to get a phone call from somebody that says, Art said to call you. And what happened was, within an hour, I was in contact with Johnson County Right to Life. Cradle of Hope is down near Fairfield and Ottumwa. They got a call within an hour from one of their nurses. This uh, mom was six weeks pregnant, had had no prenatal care, didn't have money for a doctor, got a doctor appointment set up. They didn't have transportation. Jefferson County Right to Life provided free transportation. They didn't have money to pay their rent. Dubuque County Right to Life has paid two months' rent. Johnson County Right to Life has paid a month's rent. We're going to pay more until they don't need it. The Knights of Columbus and Iowa City are going to pay a month's rent, over $500. But that's what we promised, so that's what we're going to do. And there's billions of pro-life people doing that all around the country. So my, my prayer to you today is, what's your role in all of that? Because that's really the front lines. So. We were able to hand out this brochure, and in it are all kinds of resources that matter, and they provide money and help and car seats and doctors and everything else, and all we need is a chance to give it to them. So is your role somewhere in there? Someone had to pay for this brochure. Is your role contributing money? Is someone you know who knows you're here today, when you tell them about being here, will they give some money? Is your role to write a letter to the editor? And I will, I'll tell you this too. Anyway, did I tell you the baby boy's going to be born in May? She so had a baby boy in May. She's doing great. They're doing great. So there's a lot of help out there, and we all have to be willing to give it. And all of us have a role here. You're here today because part of your role was to be here today, 
to be here and to listen to all these great speakers who came before me. Um, but anyway, so yesterday or Saturday, Johnson County had their March for Life. Had about 100 people, went across in front of Emma Goldman. There were 14 people shouting vulgarities in front of Emma Goldman across the street to us. There wasn't any trouble. Went up and prayed for an hour and then went back to St. Wenceslaus and had a nice chili lunch and sandwiches. There were a lot of students there, undergraduate students, graduate students, and five law students. So we gave the pitch to them, and here was the pitch. Your role might be just being there because we go down every Thursday, but look at me. I'm a grandpa, I have white hair, I'm a guy, and when they pull up in that car and I hand them this and I say, I have some free information here for you about a free clinic that will provide alternatives for you. Everything that's bringing you here, we can help you with. They won't help you after you're done today. And they don't know that I'm a grandfather, I'm a lawyer, I can help with that, that I been counseling women in unintended pregnancies for free for 45 years. I don't see that to toot my horn, but they don't see that. So we said to the students, they need to see you. They need to see young women standing there saying, here, I'm just like you. I'm under 30. I'm pregnant. I don't want to be. I don't know what to do. And don't let anyone ever tell you that they've made up their mind when they get there, because they haven't. And when you see a couple get out of a car and they're hugging and crying, they haven't made up their mind. And just like this father that returned, they hadn't made up their mind. And he came back and she came back. So don't let anyone tell you that myth about they, it's too late then. It's not too late. We just have to show them we'll be there. And I know for being in this movement, as you know, we will put our money where our mouth is. And part of the thing we're trying to do in this country today, since Roe was overturned and since Dobbs, is do all that. And it's two-pronged. We got to tell women we care about them. We're going to help them. We're going to give them something better than abortion. They deserve better than abortion, don't they? They deserve better than abortion. But that has to, but that's what this is. This help is better than abortion. And so we said to the students, come out with us. And we've already had some sign up that will come. One student said, well, I'm going to be running by with my friends. We're going to stop and just pray. Just be there. And there's other young women who will come and stand with us. And if they just pray, that's fine. But imagine if you're a young woman in that car and you'd be so depressed seeing grandfathers coming with their granddaughters, children in, the, in, the, in car seats in the back to this killing center. This killing center. It's awful. You know why? Because they feel like they don't have a choice. I've counseled a lot of women, and a lot of them said to me, Mr. Galoon, you know why I had an abortion? Because I, in this big freedom of choice thing, I felt like I had no choice. That's terrible. We have to tell them there is a choice, and it's a pro-life choice. So my plea to you today is follow your prayer to what your role is because there's a role for everybody and it may be big one day it may be little the next day these students i said come by whenever i said what one student he said he's already signed up. i said when do you want to come by he says well i have class at 9 30. you know college kids they don't want to get up before 10 o'clock i said well come by on your way to class just for 15 minutes just to have some young people out there with us we got to cultivate the next generation just be with us and stand there and be a face and a voice. There's such a difference. And thousands and millions of women around the country are seeing that. And they need to see us, along with the younger generation, offering help. And so find your role, encourage people. Is it doing this? Is it education? Do you kind of right to life for an educational organization? One more thing before I forget. And I didn't even have to look at my notes. I know I'm talking too long. Clarity Clinic in Dubuque is a crisis pregnancy center. Do you know how long they help and follow women after they help them have their baby? Emma Goldman shows them to the parking lot and that's it. Clarity Clinic follows them for six years. Six years, tell people that. And there's a reason, there's a reason that crisis pregnancy centers outnumber abortion clinics three to one, because they're dying and crisis pregnancy centers are thriving because people like you believe in them. Believe in them. Mary Zinn is the only maternity home in Eastern Iowa. It's located in Dubuque. That does a great job. But we have an answer 
and help for everything that's driving them there. Everything that's driving them there. If they have problems after their abortion, Emma isn't going to help them. They're done. They've driven off. Go see the doctor. Go somewhere else. Get your help somewhere else. Well, they got it from us and this family and any family that accepts our help at Emma Goldman and any place you go is going to get it for a long, long time. And how long is that? As long as they need it. One other thing I'll leave you with, and I'll close with this. You know, the pro, we, we pro-lifers were great. We think we're great. We're doing everything. We pat ourselves on the back. One thing sometimes in the movement we do is someone will be doing something and we'll say, well, that's great. Why don't you do this? Don't ever do that. Thank people for what they do, encourage them for what they do, and encourage them to maybe suggest that isn't their only role. They might have another role, but never criticize them for what they do, don't do. Thank them for what they're doing and encourage them to keep growing in how they might help. So I'm always excited to be with the greatest people I think are on the planet, and that's you. So thanks for listening. God bless you, and pray to find your role. Thank you.